Welcome to the next part of our series where we talk about the tilt trim pump. Now, I've gotten a few questions about the tilt trim pumps hydraulic lines. And if I need to replace them, the ones on the inside of the boat, how do I do that? First and foremost, you're going to have to pull the motor out. I wish I had better news for you, but the motor has to come out for this process. It, there is physically no way possible to get to those hydraulic lines, as you can see right there in the middle of the shot, right next to the water neck. There is no way to get to them with the motor in. So first and foremost, if you're watching this video and you need to know how to pull the motor out, I've got a video showing how to do that. And it's pretty easy. If you've never done it before, maybe not so much, but it's doable. Just so you know, you're gonna have to have something like this to pull your motor out. All right, I've shown in my prior episodes on how to do that. Questions, just throw some comments in the comments field below and I will link you or you can search my channel for removing the motor. I've done it not only in the OMC realm, but also in the Volvo Penta, not really much difference anyway. Okay, so you got the motor out. Now, what do I do to get to these hydraulic lines? As we zoom in here, just go over some best practices. Make sure if you're going this far in depth to replace your hydraulic lines, make sure you have a flare wrench. If you're using just regular box wrenches, right, on these 716s, you're gonna damage the flare, especially when you go to torque them down. You can see on this one over here, they, they've kind of slipped off a little bit and that's kind of damaged that flare. Brand new flares. Do your due diligence and get some flare wrenches. I tell you what, it would make everybody happy. Now take a look. Now these hydraulic lines actually go behind this plate where there's a little relief cut. And as I mentioned, they go right next to this water neck. These are the 716 flares that actually go into the other side. And there's actually hydraulic lines that kind of meet up. But as I mentioned, there's not really an easy way to get to them. I wish there was, but there's not. You got to pull the motor out. Okay. So from here, we need to remove the power steering line. And obviously to get the motor out, you've already had to take these two guys out. This part, I mean, pulling this hydraulic piece is kind of a pain. I'll tell you what, I've done it multiple times before and there's just no easy way to do it. So you're gonna need to remove these two cotter pins up and down, right? And then there's a cotter pin down here as well. Once you remove this cotter pin, you can slide this up with like a screwdriver, see how it kind of came up a little bit, and then get that out of the way. There's also a ground line that you need to disconnect, and then just thread that back into this plate so you can, you basically don't lose that stainless steel nut. All right, and then to get the rest of this hydraulic uh, piece off here is you're gonna have to unbolt these. I've seen, I've used a crescent wrench before, but keep in mind, these things are on so crazy tight that you'll end up busting your knuckle and it hurts like crazy. I'll tell you what, I busted it on this little guy. Um, all kinds of little things that have been in here. So if you can, definitely loosen this up. I think this is going to be maybe like a 13 16 or maybe up to an inch. Um, not really sure on that, but definitely try to get a socket on that if you can. And then same thing here. Uh, these are just bolts, by the way. So once you remove it, then this whole piece will be able to slide out of the way. You'll need to do that. Because in order to get this bracket off, you have to remove some bolts. All right, so we've got these two bolts here have to come out. A lot of people forget about them. And if you do, your transom plate's not coming off. We've got this nut here. That's got to come off. And then this one, which has our grounding plate on it, that's got to come off. We've got one right here next to the shift cable. That's got to go. And then this one. Now... I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. Yep, that one right there. Now, if you notice, I probably, I forgot to mention this early on here, but if you notice, there's no exhaust hooked up here and you can actually remove the motor and then uh, forget, right? Because the exhaust is kind of still in this area. Yeah, you gotta pull the exhaust off too, unfortunately. And it's held in by two bolts here. While you're replacing or removing the exhaust, make sure you put a new, this is definitely a must. You gotta put a new gasket in there. If you do get leaks, what'll end up happening is it'll constantly leak like right in this area and then it'll cause issues with your transom and you don't want to do that. Now you notice I didn't say anything about removing these two nuts. 
If you leave these two in, you won't have the transom plate in the back fall off, which is kind of important. You don't want that to go. This will actually keep it in place. All right. So whatever you do, don't mess with these, but you can pull the rest of it off. Now, once you have that off, this whole entire gray plate will be able to be removed and you'll be able to thread in your new hydraulic lines through this plate and into that little guy right there. And like I said, that that's pretty much the procedure in a nutshell. You can't, I've tried before, you know, seeing if I could leave this transom plate. There's a way to get to it, like from underneath here or something, right? Like somewhere I can get the 716th onto this. Maybe using a crow's foot. I thought about using a crow's foot. You could probably crow's foot the bottom one, but this top one, you can see right there, I really, from this angle, I could barely get that 716th on there. I think what's gonna end up having to have happen is you gotta remove the bottom flare first. That'll free up more space to then tighten the top one. So order of operations, you're gonna have to remove the bottom one first and then the top one. Okay, so that is how to replace your tilt trim pump hydraulic lines in a nutshell. I wish I could take this apart further to show you me physically removing them, but I don't need to remove the bracket here. So I figured I'd just give you all a quick run through on what to expect when you need to go through and replace these tilt trim pump lines. As always, hit that subscribe button, like the video if you thought it was helpful. Smash that like button and it'd mean a lot. Leave some comments if there's something else you'd like to see with this process. But yeah, this is going to be on the more difficult side to do, but totally doable. Totally doable. All right, guys, have a good one. Catch you on the next episode. Take it easy.